Hello witches, it's Strega Bella. Um, this is just going to be kind of an update video. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned in my last video, I haven't been making as many um, this summer because, uh, you know, we've been real busy with all the kids here and everything. But um, the last week, I've had some time to do a lot of reading. And um, my older two are away on vacation with their dad, so um, I thought I would use this time to share a little bit of um, what's been going on with um, with my practice and stuff like that. So um, I have recently been working a lot with um, the Dark Moon mysteries and stuff like that. Um, I've been reading about um, some of the very ancient um, Eleusian and Dian um, the old rites of Diana, um, rumor that there's um, these two types of rites um, of initiation. One was kind of like more open to the majority of people who wanted to be um, initiated into the mysteries of the underworld. Um, <clears throat> and then there was a second rite for people who wanted to go all the way into it. And basically, um, it's very, there's not a lot of documented um, information. They, they found some kind of a room in, I think, either Pompeii area, I believe, and it, it's um, painted with all this artwork that gives um, some idea as to what the ritual involved. Um, there was more to it than just, you know, a ritual. There was, um, you know, uh, fasting and prayer and um, cleansing, bathing that had to take place before you could even um, participate. And then you would um, go to the first part of the rite. And then I believe some time passed before you could do the second. Um, but anyway, I'm going to hopefully find some books about it. Um, most of the stuff I've read has been just mostly stuff online. But um, I'm kind of interested in that because they say that, um, you know, it, it went very underground. Um, it was originally a very secretive thing. And then it kind of became public knowledge um, during the time, like, of the Roman Empire and all that. And then word got out, and a lot of um, politicians and religious people, everybody wanted to kind of be a part of it. And then because um, it was kind of challenging to the authorities, then they banned it. They destroyed um, the, the sites where um, the rites took place. Um, and supposedly this remnant of artwork um, in this room is kind of all that's left um, of it. But some people suppose, rumor has it, that there are some people who still um, take part and um, pass on this rite of initiation into the underworld. So anyway, <laughs> that's kind of the stuff I've been um, reading about and interested in lately. Um, and the reason being is that I've been doing a lot of um, deep shadow work, um, cleansing, and tapping into... Um, like repressed energies and um from some of the books that i've been reading on the dark moon stuff um when when events don't get digested properly even events that you don't remember that took place in your infancy and in early childhood um stuff you're not even aware of um just like food is digested and converted into energy and then stored as fat and that kind of stuff in your body, um, it's similar to the emotional energy. Um, when we have an event that happens that needs to be processed, especially something traumatic, um, if it's not properly processed, digested, and kind of put into your mind as, you know, a clear part of your your story, your history, um, it actually creates like a muscle knot, like a tension. And so when you do this deep inner um, work, um, it 
literally releases that tension and that energy and all of a sudden you have um, accessible to you an amount of energy that was trapped and so it's been a wonderfully healing experience to actually um, do this and um, tap into energy that you know if it's left for years and years um, you know just stored and held inside of you um, it, it's what causes negative patterns of behavior, things like addiction, um, you know, problems with sexuality, um, uh, stuff, you know, trouble getting in trouble with authority figures, having trouble in relationships, and that kind of stuff. Um, eating disorders, cutting behaviors, all kinds of negative things that we, we don't really know why we do them but we say we want to get rid of them. We say we don't want to repeat these patterns of behavior, but for some reason we don't have control over them. And um, so tapping into this deep, dark shadow um, energy can really access that and um, allow you to be able to release it. There is a ritual... Um, I don't know that it's even a specific. I've seen a ritual called the Dark Night of the Soul ritual, and um, you know there is a specific ritual that you can do. But the idea behind the Dark Night of the Soul is um, to really give yourself over to um, allowing yourself to face um, the worst, the deepest, darkest fears. Um, usually, that involves facing death. Um, and then coming out the other side. And when you come out the other side, um, it can be tremendously healing. You come out a changed person and having access to, um, to an emotional um, well-being that you didn't before. Um, it's, it, can, it can be what changes, the, changes your life in the sense that the things that you used to um, need to, to cope or survive, suddenly you don't need that and those things anymore, whether they're addictions or, um, you know, things that you do to protect yourself emotionally in relationships. So, um, yeah. So that process, um, some people only make it just so far. Um, like some people just don't want to delve that deep into, um, traumatic events and experiences. Um, they kind of do the the mirror um, facing the that they have these shadow aspects of themselves but a lot of people don't make it to the point where they want to delve deep enough to figure out where they came from or why but if you have the strength and you have the capacity to do that kind of work um, I definitely recommend that I mean you don't have to do it all at once you can do it in stages but um, it, it's so healing and so amazing. Um, and I can see people in my, li my life who I know who did not ever um, deal with the hidden traumas. Well, they weren't, they knew that traumas had happened, obviously, but they continued through their life with these um, denials and um, repeating the the negative cycles over and over and eventually what happens is it will literally form like a cancer in your body a tumor an illness it manifests itself in really harmful ways so um and depending how bad bad and unhealthy the trauma or the events that um cause this these negative patterns depending how bad they are they can really um be bad illnesses or cancers and actually kill people um, so anyway, uh, I've been reading and accessing and doing um, work as far as that kind of stuff goes. Working with um, the dark, the new moon, the dark um, mysteries, waning powers. And um, so that has been so awesome. Um, it has allowed me to do a lot of cleansing, um, both in myself physically, spiritually, as well as it also has, um, it affects the physical around, around us as well. 
we suddenly will start vibrating on a different level and attract to us the things that we wanted but felt like for whatever reason they weren't coming to us um so i've done a lot of uh cleaning and setting things up in the house like kind of um if you guys are familiar with feng shui um so that there's no blockages um the energy flow in the household is better the living room is all um free and clear and it's actually affected the other members of our household it's awesome um my husband is actually seeing the positive of <laughs> the way i've changed things up and i keep trying to instill um the idea behind why we want certain areas of our house free and clear of clutter because it it is representative of um of our life so um and that applies with you can look at um astrology you could use astrology to do it you can use feng shui there's all different um types of belief systems and it all kind of says the same thing when we declutter our emotions and our inner self um, it has tremendous effects on the physical plane and that's kind of how witchcraft works so once you realize all of that um, you really start to understand that magic isn't that magical it's really just um, a balance of the energies of the of the universe um, everything has to kind of balance out and um, it's really very scientific in fact more than magical um, but a lot of these archetypes um, the myths and the folklore stories um, when you read them as you're working with these energies it's amazing because um, the stories suddenly don't seem so fantastical they seem like like they apply um, thousands of years ago and they apply as well now so um, right now I am doing a journaling exercise from this one dark moon mysteries um, but yeah so I'm gonna try to get some books on um, ancient Greece and um, Italy Pompeii and try to find out a little bit more if I can delve any deeper into those um, those mysteries those mystery rites um, they I also found some connection to um, Catholicism and purgatory that were related to that um, they say once you're initiated in that second um, ritual that you're guaranteed some kind of a place like a a spot in the underworld I guess you would say but um, when this translated over to Catholicism um, some people believe that that's where the idea of purgatory came from so rather than be cast into hell um, for your sins or whatever this would um, guarantee you this place in the underworld where the people in um, who are still living can pray you out and still you have a chance to get into heaven um, a lot of Catholicism really is based um, from from pagan um, rituals and ideas. It's really interesting. Um, I was raised Catholic, so to me, it's um, very interesting to learn about that. Um, I I also um, was thinking of doing a video about um, gargoyles because I got those gargoyles when I was in Maine. So um, I just wanted to give you a brief update. And um, I will probably do a second video sometime today or tomorrow and show you guys um, a little of my decluttering, um, what I've done to the house. My husband did a bunch of painting and um, I harvested a lot of mint um, from outside my house that I have growing. Um, just a fraction. <laughs> I harvested just a fraction of the mint that's out there. Um, the owner of the house didn't even know that this like massive amount of mint was growing up the walls and everything. And um, so I harvested some of it, but um, I have a lot more to harvest so it doesn't get wasted. Um, I will have mint forever. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll make it into gifts for Christmas time or Samhain or something like that. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying the summer, and blessed be. Bye.